Rally Championships races its way onto the Amiga. It's Amigos episode 293. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about Rally Championships. Yeah, now, man. Aaron, I got my shot yesterday. I'm, I'm halfway through the COVID vaccination process. Very good. And uh, to do this, I had to drive out. I had to drive out to uh, Boone County. You've been to Boone County before? It's been a while. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> man, when you're driving out Racine and yeah. Sylvester and all these places, <laughs> you feel like you're in a rally championship because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 there's cars that are passing you going 75 miles an hour on a one lane road. Yeah, you got you've got double backs and switchbacks. I felt like I, I was ready to, to enter one of these races in real life. Okay, now, potholes, logs in the road. Yeah, every Bystanders crowding into the street. It's all there, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, Aaron, have you ever actually attended an auto racing event in person? Yes. I mean, but, well, no. I, does, I, does Demolition Derby count? And also okay. uh, the the bit where they jumped the bikes with that motocross, I've been because it was the same. It was the same ticket, so I did okay. watch a little bit of that. I don't know if that counts. Well, I think motocross probably counts, except for the fact that it's not auto racing, and destruction derby probably counts, except for the fact that it's not it's a demolition race. Demolition derby, so. destruction derby, that puts a lot of stress on the derbiers. <laughs> Demolition's a little easier to. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been to any sort of an auto racer or any. I've been to a car show before. The cars yeah. are moving pretty oh, slow. Yeah. At the car I've show, been to those. Though. Yeah, tons of those. Yeah, yeah. Auto racing not really a thing. I think amongst the general public well, in America, like it is no. in the UK, it is a huge um, thing. But it's a different type of racing that we dig over here. Well, and, and like even like you know, obviously NASCAR is the biggest racing sport in America. But I don't think that NASCAR has as many fans relative to the population that F1 does in the UK. Would you agree or disagree? There was a time where NASCAR, when it was ultra hot, when it was at its peak, mm -hmm. and it was right, it was as popular as anything. It mm -hmm. was the fastest growing sport in America. It was the most popular sport in America, drawing the biggest crowds. Here's mm -hmm. the problem. People got sick of that. And now, uh, uh, you know, we come from a... Uh, Listen, stuff like NASCAR was born in hills like West Virginia's and Georgia's mm -hmm. and uh, Alabama with the uh, and this is the, everyone thinks that this is such a wacky story, but it's true. All these bootleggers racing through the hills, they were they were they were uh, messing out their hot rods to beat the revenue man, and then mm -hmm. they started racing each other. That's the, that's that's how some of the biggest stars in the what it turned it turned out to be stock cars and heroes. That's where they came from. They were all, that's why they were all south. The Southerners are real into that. Uh, NASCAR got sort of like nationwide acceptance for a while, but it has receded. I don't know how it compares to F one uh, or road rally stuff. I don't. I just don't know because again, we have F one racing here. We have rallies here, but they're nowhere near as big as NASCAR. So all we can compare it to is NASCAR. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd agree with that. It is unfortunate. I've always thought it was unfortunate that we have what I consider to be the lamest form of auto racing as our most popular, you know, genre. Going around in a circle or around in an oval five or six hundred times. I've tried to get into NASCAR and I just can't do it. How about you? I've never even tried. I mean, that's not true. I used to watch races when I was a kid, mm -hmm. but they I, I was never a huge fan, uh, but... Uh, I did know a lot of the racers. I did know sort of what the cars were all about. But, I mean, for me, uh, I, just, I was never a big enough fan for me to stay in with it. And I think a lot of fans, they, they lost, the, the, the racing lost a lot of what brought the fans to the table, which was, I mean, you could, in the old days, they actually drove actual cars that you could actually mm -hmm. own. You could work on a car. You could go race it. Now, if you watch like NASCAR, for example, I mean in F one, it's always been different. But NASCAR's appeal was they were just driving really souped up cars. And but yeah. as the years rolled on, now they're nothing resembling a car except that they have four wheels. I think that well, killed a lot of it for people. I think it's interesting that you mentioned that because uh, that uh, the documentary that we're going to mention here in a little bit that both of us watched uh, the rally documentary. He was driving a Ford Escort. 
Yeah, it was a highly modified Ford Escort, but I think there is the appeal of that. Like you said, that this was a at some point this was a factory model, mo, you know, model car that was of course highly modified. So yeah. that is really cool. NASCAR cars don't even have real headlights. It's just like they're, they're just not like even real cars. On. They've got a yeah. fiberglass top that just goes over basically an engine strapped to a roll cage. That's effectively yeah. what they are. Yeah, yeah. So Aaron. Before we get into the rally action, let's talk about this week's Amiga News, shall we? Right on, sir. Right on. Amiga News. Not a huge week in the Amiga News. Um, we're going to start things off, Aaron, with this video that I discovered. This is uh, something that I never heard of before. You know, this A-E-O-N. I'm never quite sure how to say that. Aeon. They make all kinds of wacky stuff for the Amiga. And this is the early adopter bundle for the A1222. Uh, so this is the the Trevor Dickinson new generation Amiga. Okay, uh, I'm not sure which. I think the A1222 is the new the newest model that's come out. That's supposed to be the more cost effective one. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, have you ever have you ever played around with any of these next generation Amigas, Aaron? I don't even know what I have no idea what these even is. So I've no, I have. So this is no. this is like the X five thousand. These are those. They're 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 supposedly. You know the, the the pitch behind this is that this is a new Amiga that has you know contemporary power that runs OS four. I think, uh, and uh, it's basically and this guy Trevor Dickinson he manufactures all these boards himself and he's basically a one man computer company. Um, I've seen these only in person at uh, Amiga Ireland events, and the people that own them are very passionate about them. And they are cool. It's like the ultimate hobby computer because when you have one of these things, these are expensive machines, and you know that you're going to be the only one in the room, or unless you're at an Amiga event, which you probably won't be. But you, uh, you know, they 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 do stand out. Now, what this is is uh, this is a uh, this is a clock port and sensor module for the A1200 and the A600. And I'm okay. reading directly from the YouTube description here. So it's like a standard battery backup clock, but this one has sensors that you can use to monitor your temperatures, uh, your CPU use, the Alice and Denise, how much they're being taxed, etc. So a pretty cool upgrade. Uh, this is, uh, this is again, this is the Amiga Kit clock port with sensors. Right. Have you ever heard of anything like this before, Aaron? Well, yeah, clock ports have been around forever. The sensors, mm -hmm. not so much. I, what is the gimmick he's sticking in there? Is that unreloaded? Uh, the, that, the, the, yeah, that that's the, I think that that's part so of the early the adopter clock, bundle. This is just the sensors, you know. Adding a clock, I mean, I, I uh, I've got a gimmick that that has a battery clock. You know, I mean, if, listen, if if you're doing serious work, which we're not because we're idiots, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that stuff's important. Look at all the crap he's got lodged into his Amiga 600. So he's he's doing some heavy duty crap there. So you got to have. Yeah. I can, Hey, it wouldn't hurt to have any type of, any sort of sensor. Uh, action is not bad, you know. I can understand it, uh, but uh, uh, two we wouldn't need them both. <laughs> That's for no, darn no. sure. But, but if, still, you, if it's you, cool. yeah, it's, it's it's still pretty cool. Something I never heard of before, and I guess it's less than thirty dollars, so it won't break the bank. What either. is the so, Aeon AAA Early Adopter Bundle, Bo? That's that I have not watched far enough in the video to get to it yet, so I'm not sure what exactly what what that is, but. Uh, I'll have to watch it and maybe report back next week on what is all contained in that early adopter bundle. Yeah, so, I haven't stay seen tuned. this video, but I'll have a look at it, Boat. Yeah, yeah. All right, Aaron, coming up next, we have a new video from our man, Mr. Doug, 10-Minute Amiga Retrocast. Now, Aaron, I know you've watched this one. Tell us about it. Uh, oh, is this, the, uh, this is when he hits... Uh, actually, I did watch this. Sorry, I got confused. I thought it was last week's. So, this is just... A, this is Doug going in there... And he, this whole video is about his quest to have a working LED uh, hard drive indicator for his uh, vampire and some other stuff. There's, it, it is a thing, and he goes into why this happens as to where the that you don't really have a, a decent hard drive light. Look how happy Doug is. He's a, he's the happiest smile on this guy I've ever seen. Anyway, yeah, he, he goes into it, uh, and what he's doing here, it's actually pretty simple. He goes and finds uh, the activity... Uh, the leg that measures activity on the on the IDE uh, drive uh, slot there. See that if you look at the IDE port right there, mm -hmm. there's a leg on there that you can run off of that will that basically is your activity that will run an activity light. And then he has to draw five, I think it's five volts from uh, from like another plug, and then he he basically mounts the sucker up and wham bam, Bob's your uncle hard drive light. So if awesome. a hard drive lights 
important to you. This will take care of it. He goes through all the steps as to how to do it. You can also, he talks about how he's planning on doing uh, something with the 1000 in terms of mounting a hard drive light somewhere or using some of the, one of the existing lights as a hard drive light. You know, I will say, hey, I, not having a hard drive light sucks. I, I, my computer, my actual main PC, the hard drive light's so tiny and in and, and such a stupid spot that it, I don't know who built, who designed this thing, but they were, I don't know why I bought it. I'm an idiot for buying it. So, because you can't <laughs> tell what's going on, if, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, uh, there you go. If, if if you need to add a working hard drive light to any of these items, Doug has taken care of your business there, Boatster. Cool, cool. All right, Aaron, our next story comes to us from Indie Retro News. And this is an upcoming uh, shoot 'em up that I don't think that we've talked about before. It's called Boss Machine. Yeah, and it looks that. really impressive. This is a uh, side scrolling, uh, horizontally scrolling shooter. And uh, there's a new update that's just been released. Uh, and you can, I don't know that there is a working uh, version of this game, but you can check out a video of it in progress. And boy, wow, it looks great. great. Yeah, the action is fast and furious. This thing runs at a tremendous clip. Very, very colorful, very well animated. So we'll definitely keep an eye on this. Uh, this comes to us from, uh, let's see here, Kevin Saunders, I think, is the uh, the name of the the, uh, the guy that, yeah, Kevin Saunders that is programming this. So uh, check that out. It and, looks like uh, R-Type and UN Squadron had a child. And it yes, just, uh, you know, that's a great comparison. One would wonder, Boatster, what, uh, what sort of Amiga, because look at how silky smooth and quick that's running. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, great name. I hope, hopefully, uh, Boss Man's getting a cut. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, that looks great, and you're right. That's double, double fast. So yeah, there's no, uh, there's no system requirements that I can see. It's AGA. It does do say AGA, yeah. though. Uh, I'm guessing that you're going to need something. You're going to need something pretty, pretty powerful to run this now, thing at the speed know, that they're showing it off. We've been surprised yeah. before, so it'd be nice that's to see true. if that's something that, that we could all that we could all get a. Uh, get hold of but yeah that looks great i i like a, a real fast type shooter on the on the amiga new one that'd be cool yeah yeah or do it's due now our final news story aaron is just checking up with the fine fine folks over at retro rewind.ca they've always got new stuff coming out and this week uh they have just released they are now selling amiga os 3.1.4 oh yeah this i believe is the newest uh kickstart and os combo uh, that is available for the Amiga. Um, now, Aaron, have you upgraded any of your Amigas with this latest OS? Uh, three point no, I don't have this one. I have not got. I've got three point one. Uh, in a, in uh, let's see, I'm trying to think where I've. I have upgraded a couple, but I don't. I don't think I've gotten the newest one. No, that's a good price too. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, uh, this this is I think uh, six discs plus the Kickstart ROM itself, fifty bucks. Uh, some release highlights include uh, it's got native support for all the Motorola processors from the 68000 to the 68060. Uh, you've got large hard drive support, uh, a modernized workbench, lots of things to like here in uh, with Amiga OS 3.1.4. And uh, if you're looking for a uh, quality place to buy it where, you know, you're going to get it shipped out to you quickly uh, and, uh, you know, support Retro Rewind. They're a great, great shop. And while you're there, Make sure you check out all of the hardware stuff that they have on offer, whether you need a, a RGB to HDMI adapter or a capacitors or anything like that. And that's not all. Uh, if you use the promo code Amigos Rock, you can save 10% off any order. So uh, make sure you use that promo code when you're over at Retro Rewind. Save yourself some cash. We do thank Frank and the team over at Retro Rewind for sponsoring the Amigos podcast. Yeah, he's a good guy too. We play. He jumps in on the uh, Team Speaker regulars, and we go crazy on there. So we always have a good time. Great guy. Yeah, man. All right, Aaron. That's going to wrap things up for the news this week. What do you say we dive into this week's game, Rally Championships? Right on, man. Rally Championships. You know, Boat, I will ask you the eternal question. Had you played this bad boy? Never. I'd never played this before. I'd never played it. I never knew it existed. I never heard of it, Boat. Uh, but when I and I, I, I did a, this is one where I did a little research on it. Uh, but just to see what the what the what kind of game it was, because I, when I think rally game, I think I, especially on something on the computer, I think something real complicated. Maybe you're tweaking gears and doing crap like that. Uh, but this did not is not that kind of game. So 
Uh, what we've got here, Rally Championships, uh, released in 94. you got two versions of this bad boy boat. You've got the four-disc ECS version. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the big dog, uh, the seven-disc AGA version. Which one did you tackle? Uh, I only played the AGA version. I could not get the ECS OCS version to work. I also played the uh, AGA version because it's the one I had. <clears throat> I did look at some footage of the uh, the other one, and it stinks. It looks horrible. So I would mm. stick the AGA on this one. Uh, this was published by Flair. Woo! And it was uh, uh, <laughs> developed by the Inside Team. Now, I looked into these guys. The Inside Team only developed a couple games, Boat. And mm. this was one of them. The other one was Deadly Racer on MS-DOS. And Deadly Racer is just is exactly the same as this game. Same engine. It's just sort of a little tweaked out game. Okay. Uh, this game only was released for DOS and the Amiga. Uh, so that was the only two systems to get this. I, I don't know which they developed for, but ever, as you see the comparison video we show later, I would wager it was probably the Amiga. Because okay. the PC was a little little ragged. Mm. Uh, these guys, I believe, all these fellows are Italian. Uh, the art, the coder on this was Alberto De, Bono, De Boni, and the coder was uh, Tizano Sardone. They both worked on the game Dangerous Streets, which I have that one we know. Uh, and the graphics were done by Fabio uh, Corica. Fabio. Fabio. Wow. He worked on. I didn't he know actually, he was into the Amiga scene. Well, this is Fabio. Corica boat. Mm -hmm. He did in the Dead of Night, Smash, and Springtime, and the one of the gra other graphics guy was Rene Gazzoldi, and he did a game called Blue Boy, Championship Driver, Dangerous Streets, and something called Swords and Galleons, and the music was done by the team of David Newman and James Veal, both worked on Sleepwalker, the uh, CD version. So, mm -hmm. there you go. That's your team. Now, what you're going to find from that team is that they didn't work on a ton, collectively, they didn't work on a ton of what I would call quality or Amiga games or Amiga games in general. Uh, so, But they did work on some. And this, but like I said, they went away quickly. So you do your math on that. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned, this was only released on DOS. Uh, and I had a lot of fun trying to research this company and this uh, 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 in general and this game because most of everything I found was, in fact, in a different language. Uh, in fact, this game got no English reviews. They were all in German or uh, uh, the uh, and, or o other languages, Italian, for example. So we'll get to that in a minute. So what it is, is this funny game? though because I I don't remember seeing a bunch of foreign language options at the beginning. I guess you could Wrong. choose between English and Italian, right? <laughs> oh no, there are tons actually. Really? In fact, okay. when it, when languages, I put all. <laughs> they, they 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 support tons of languages. At okay. The, at the very beginning, when you boot this game, it says. And you may have missed this. It says press button or hit something if you want to switch languages. And if you do, it's got all kinds of flags up there that you can switch mm. the languages to. So, yeah, I will say this. This is the most multilingual game we ever covered, <laughs> uh, ever. Now, I, I will say I did not look at the manual on this. The, uh, so I don't know if they – I'm assuming the, the manuals had more multilingual. Did you look at the manual for this one? Mm -mm. No, no. This is not really one of those games. So this game starts off uh, – with a uh, pretty interesting boot screen. I knew we were in trouble, and I want to get your feelings right out of the gate on this, because the very first screen is this uh, picture of, like, a, a rally car. Like, a, mm -hmm. it's a digitized picture. Mm -hmm. And then when you start the game, it, it sort of just enlarges in front of you, but it's not <laughs> smooth or attractive. No. It's like... It's like this. It's gonna blow. It just looks yeah. like it's distorted. Yeah. It's like what the hell? <laughs> you know, you can tell that this comes from an era where these digitized pictures were coming to the fore, and and these guys they they got all the mileage out of these that they could because uh you know not only was that a digitized picture but there's all kinds of those spread throughout the game and you're right when you see that that thing start to sort of ripple and and and, and explode towards you yeah. it doesn't look good it yeah, looks that, bad that was the first note i wrote down weird car zoom on open that was about, yeah. yeah that's a weird one so this game is a very simple rally game now boat alluded to this before and i'm hoping he's going to get into it right now we boat found a uh, a television show that had done an episode on rally racing where the yeah. host of the show goes and becomes a rally racer. And I learned so if I'm glad, so glad I watched that because I really, to be honest with you, I didn't know what rally racer really was. I think I knew, 
but I wasn't one hundred percent sure. Could you you want to? Yeah. So the, the, the video, that? if you, if you guys want to watch this, just do a YouTube search. Nineteen eighty one Lombard RAC rally in the deep end. That's the name of the. Yeah. That's the name of the YouTube video. This is where uh, Chris Searle <laughs> is his name. He teams up with this legit rally driver, Roger Clark, multi time both- champ. Yeah, and yeah. they both and and, uh, and they do the 1981 uh, rally race uh, in a Ford Escort. Yeah. So this is this is great because it's the classic dumb guy with the professional, and the dumb guy is trying to learn everything he needs to know in a, in a couple weeks or whatever before he jumps into the driver's seat. And one th- one thing that's interesting that I didn't realize about rally racing is it's not like you just got one navigator and one driver. You're swapping places back and forth. Yeah. I didn't realize that was the case. And when you watch the the, the reporter driving and, and the camera pans over to the to the rally race to, to Roger Clark, he just he's not happy. He's not happy with what's going on. It's very funny. I like when he looks to Clark for like an attaboy. He does this every so often, and and that guy won't give him nothing. <laughs> He doesn't. At one point, he's like, "Listen, you did moderately well, like well for a beginner, and you and we only finished like below average." It's a kills the guy, (laughs) and this newscast is like, "Oh, just deflated." (laughs) But I had no idea that these guys. I think the the rally race, I think, was something like six days long, and they only got like a combined four hours of sleep. It seems like a very very dangerous sport, to tell you the truth. Yeah, I I like the fact that I mean, listen. It could be a lot of uh, video hocus pocus, but it seems like I had a feeling this was all legit because mm-hmm. this rally race guy was a no nonsense dude. Right. And and if this and if this guy, this uh, the guy that hosted the show, what was his name, Cyril's, if he'd gotten in that car and just been ham and egg in it, like that guy probably would have killed him. Yeah. He would have killed, <laughs> physically killed him. And uh, something else about the guy is he the the guy the the guy whose show it was was probably a legit six two. Mm-hmm. And he 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 PK zipped himself into this car, to <laughs> compress himself to get in. It looked like it was just him getting out like a giraffe emerging. You know, they yeah. they they told him when they built the car, they put his seat in the back seat. That's why that's far back as they could go. <laughs> but it's a great episode. The fact that the guy actually preps for the show by like he gets in a helicopter at high speed. He has a, other racers drive him around to give him tips. Mm-hmm. It's even got guys I'd heard of in it, like. Uh, who was the one guy? I think he's uh, uh, Scottish. He's super famous. Jackie. Uh, uh, help me out. What's that? Gleason. No, no, no. Help me out, chat. You know the guy. But I mean, he was <laughs> Jackie Stewart. Thank you. That's right. I mean, him, we know. I mean, he was a big deal when I was a kid. Mm. You know, he's got a cool accent, too. He did a lot of coverage and stuff. And, uh, uh, they uh they so they gave him tips he trained and then you get to see the crap you would never see about how they pick the where they're going to get their tires and stuff changed and where all the crap on the course is and the, and where to make a wrong turn and the right turn also like the bit in the race where he actually makes the wrong turn on the interstate and they have to go like 20 miles <laughs> yeah 20 miles out of the way can and you then imagine back again? setting with that serious <laughs> pissed off former champion as this guy goes <laughs> turn around the next exit that would suck I'd be yeah. looking for the ejector seat button. Anyway, this was a great show. Well done, Boat. And everyone should watch it if you want to learn about rally. This is what I love about the Amigos, Boat. We get to learn about all kinds of different sports. That's right. And this is another right. one. So with that show in the back, our back pocket, uh, we had a look at the rally championship. Rally championship is actually pretty simple. It's not like a ton of options in it in terms of gameplay. There's a lot of good options for controls. It gives you the let's, 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 let's talk about the control yeah. options for a second because Please. I've never seen an Amiga game that does this before. Whenever you boot it up and you select your joystick, you know, you can, and then you go into the joystick selection screen and you actually get graphical representations of joysticks. So you yeah. got to, it's like select a one button joystick and then it shows, you know, like a, a normal Amiga one button joystick. Yeah. And then you push over and then you've got the CD32 pad there. And you're yeah. like, oh, that's cool. And then you push over again and it shows you a Mega Drive controller. Yeah. And see, we've got the buttons and all the directions labeled so you know wh- what they do. Excellent work on that. By the way, I should mention this game. Uh, was scheduled to get a CD32 release that never happened, which is probably mm-hmm. why they added that, uh, that. That's what I read anyway. Yeah, that makes sense. So the controls, 
Um, though, basically, the controls are your big changeable option. The other options, you could run this. This is your typical game, Boat. I'm ready for you to drop the hammer. You could choose between music or sound effects. You don't get both, Boat. You don't get both. Uh, you don't and, get both. Uh, hey, and, I was I was glad to have some in-game music. Well, I'm not going to bury it. There's a problem with in-game music, Boat, which we'll get to here in a second. And in fact, knowing you, you may not even know about this. So... Once you decide, you can do practice rounds, you can do a single rally, or you can go for the whole enchilada of the world rally. Okay, I did a, I did a practice, then I did a single, but I'll, the world's where the, it's where it's at. Yeah. Then you get to select cars. Now, I didn't have the, there's, there's a cheat floating around for this thing, which I didn't have. So I had to just, I had the money I had, but you've got to use money to select to buy your first car. And you really have and one And you can choice. only buy one, one car. There's only one car you can afford. Well, the there's end. trainers that'll let you, you know, crank up the other cars. Right. Now, once you buy this car, you're just, you're still not on the track. Uh, you've got to uh, outfit the car. So mm -hmm. this thing will tell you what leg of the rally you're starting on. For whatever reason, it always started to be on snow. Did it do that to you as well? Yeah. 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 Sometimes at night. Sometimes during the day. Mm -hmm. could... So anyway, you get a choice of the kind of tires you want. It's got rain-type tires. It's got uh, slick tires. And then you've got your studded yeah. tires. Now, what this reminded me of was the uh, was the outfitting screen in supercars. Do you remember that, yeah, Aaron, where you go like and you that. visit the garage? This is a it's a 3D rendering yeah. of uh, of 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 the garage and you you basically you click on the uh, you click in the office to hire your driver you click on the lift to, to outfit your tires and all that stuff and you also have to gas up your car yeah. in between and, races and repair so. it yeah yeah now I'm gonna tell you a funny by the way this is when Boat says these are 3D renders these are your classic like early 90s type renders like they yeah. don't stand up the i have a, I have a strange i have a strange sense of nostalgia about these sorts of renders i don't even know what you call them like there's got to be a technical term yeah. to, other than just like poor yeah you know <laughs> but, <laughs> so you're talking about the screen where you uh where you could do all this stuff there one of the options there's like an office there now i'll tell mm -hmm. you uh i mistakenly thought that's where you could get loans in case you went broke Okay, so I didn't go in there for the first dozen times I played this. Big mistake. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So once you have uh, finished up in the office, then it's time to hit the road. Uh, now, uh, this game has uh, who knows how many races it's got, but I know it does a lot of the old the old standard. You got this race forward, you got this race backwards, but the tracks are pretty long. The ones I saw, and I guess you would say they're pretty well detailed. We'll get to that in a minute. But you start at the starting line. You will not see any other moving cars in, there, in this game. You will see parked cars, but you won't mm -hmm. see any moving cars. You're you're a one-man show in this. Right, because uh, that's what rally racing is. Right, right. Well, I read a lot of people complaining about that. And I will say, even in the rally races, like on the show we watched, you did see tons and tons of other rally cars. It's right, not like but they it's, were not just, like, it's not like an F1 race or a right. NASCAR race. But, I mean, you yeah. would see it. It seems like you would pass one occasionally, but yeah. that's the way it goes. So anyway, at, once you start the race, you take off. Now, I, did you go with the two-button joystick boat? No, I just went with the one okay, button. Okay, I went with the two-button, uh, and it, the, I would say the control was okay. So uh, you've got mine with the buttons were uh, were breaking gas. I, I also drove an automatic car because I can't Yeah, do oh, I was automatic. All. I, yeah. I started out with the standard, and that was, that was a nightmare. So one thing you quickly learn is that if you don't have a co-driver... This game is incredibly difficult because <laughs> basically there's no one to tell you when turns are coming, so you just have mm -hmm. to either run into the turn or just try to guess or right. try to memorize the track. Now, I will say, Boat, <clears throat> I got so good at working without a co-driver that I could, I could get past levels with no co-driver. I did mm -hmm. do that because I didn't know about them. And finally, one time I was like, well, for the show, I better go in here and see what this loan thing's all about. And I saw these pictures. I was like, well, son of a gun. <laughs> yeah. And these are your classic. I am sure that the pictures of the co-drivers are members of the inside team. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, let's talk about the co-drivers. But go ahead and talk about the co-drivers for a minute. So the co-drivers, I think there's six of them. There's either six so, or yeah. eight. There, and, so, and they all cost different amounts of money. And depending per race. On Right. And you've got to, yeah, you purchase them per race. And uh, basically, the cheaper ones will give you not as many clues as to what turns are coming up. That's the way that I understood it. So yeah. if you spend more on a navigator, they're going to tell you more turns that are coming up. And those are, I mean, obviously, you just said that you could you could win races without them. I could not. I could not win races well, without a navigator. It, let me tell you something. Let's talk about these navigators. So 
you've got of course you're you have no money in this game because you bought a car. And so even when you even when you do fair, like I could be like beat the record and I still didn't get paid that much. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right now, well, especially by the time that you fuel up and everything, and you, you don't end repairs. up with a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. So you can buy like the chintziest co-pilot, right? Or you could pay the top guys that way out of your range. But the the the, the crappier co-driver, the cheaper co-driver you pick, the less effective they are. This is a huge deal. And by mm-hmm. the way, in a real race. That first, the first second drivers, I would take and I would put them outside the car and run them over, because what <laughs> happens is, you know, you've played this game like Neo Drift or whatever, where the little arrow comes up and it tells mm-hmm. you which way to go. That's what your co-drivers are doing. Right. Except when you've got a crappy one, they just don't tell you about some of the turns, and you just right. ram into stuff. Mm-hmm. It is so. Well, I mean, they, they they had to do it that way because why else would you want to upgrade your driver? Listen. That I, I think having that as an option was dumb. I'll be honest with you. Because no one, even the worst... Listen, I've never been in a rally race, but if I'm sitting in the driver's seat and I see a turn coming, I'm going to say something. These guys don't <laughs> say nothing. And also, the crappier drivers, they wait longer to tell you when a turn's coming. You know, mm-hmm. It's an interesting aspect to the game. I will say, you're going to want to upgrade to your driver early. Now, you were talking about the in-game music. And I'm sure you know about this, but you may not. If you have the end game music on, you don't get to hear the drivers talk. It's a right. huge that's a huge detriment to the game because them talking is an audible clue. And when you're watching the road, uh, an audible clue helps a lot. It, the visual clue helps because it tells you the curve, but the audio I found the audible the audio cues a lot more important to me. Uh, I will say I did notice that when you pick the chick co driver. She sounds just like a man, so the voices don't change. I thought that was... Why would you put her in there if you weren't going to change the voices, man? Well, I mean, they, they, what do you work... They only have seven discs to work with. I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> Good point, Boat. So, we've talked about the lead-up to the race. We've talked about the get ready to go in the race. Now, let's talk about the actual racing. Boat, when you get in your car and you start off on the snow... If, and assuming you've got the good tires, and I didn't notice that. I, I thought tires made a difference. Uh, I don't know if you did that, but I, because I, I ran some races with the normal tires on like snow, and I, I, I always just I, I bought the tires that I thought made sense. Yeah. So well, I didn't. Sometimes I just to see what would happen, and mm-hmm. I could tell a difference, but you know, mm-hmm. could just be, you know, psychosomatic. Right? So you get in your car, you take off, and this is just one of those games, sort of like a Neo Drift. Is that what's called Drift Out Boat? Where the yeah. where you're it's it gives you sort of like an angled above the car view of like mm-hmm. over the top view and then an arrow will pop up if you've got your co driver to tell you when to turn because that you there's so there's not that much distance between your car and the end of the screen so right. you can't really figure it out Im- imagine you know if you've got the the width and the height of the screen your car is probably uh, I mean it takes up a significant portion of yeah. the screen yeah this is not like micro machines you know no. that your car is probably four or five times bigger than the car in micro machines i will say i thought this was uh, even without a dri- co-driver i thought this was easier than micro machines oh yeah well this now, is a better game than micro now machines, okay now, so, see i can see where we're going here boat your thoughts on the when you first started playing your the graphics the control what did you think i thought it was great I thought it was great. I, you know, I, this is a game. And again, it's because I came off watching the very first thing that I did before I played this game was watch that documentary. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) And the thing, the, the thing about rally racing is that you're going fast and you don't have a lot of time to make decisions. Okay. Yeah. This game is a simulation of a rally race. You don't have a lot of time to make decisions about turning. So to me, the fact that it's difficult, you know, the fact that you have to you have to react quickly uh, is a plus because it, that that's what separates this form of racing from, you know, uh, a, a normal racing game, you know, like Jeff Crammon's F1 or something like that. So, you know, when I started playing this game, I was disappointed about the way that they have the um, the time. OK, in this game, you have around two minutes to complete the course. And if you don't complete it in two minutes, then you fail. It varies. The time varies. Well, yeah, I'm just saying it's it's some amount of time. Yeah. Okay. And they shouldn't have done that. What they should have done is done do what normal racing games do and just say, okay, you're trying to get the best time that you can. 
And if you get to, uh, you know, if, if you get this amount of money for getting this time, you know, but they should let you finish the race no matter what is what I'm saying. Cause the only way you can get better at these tracks is by completing them. So, but when I started playing, I was like, wow, you know, I, I felt like the car controlled pretty well. I used a one button controller cause I never use brake in these games. You know, you always just let off, <laughs> you let off the acceleration and you just drift around. I didn't use brake much either. I'll be honest, but I yeah. did have it. It was available. Um, and, uh, you know, I wasn't able to complete the race. It probably took me three tries to complete the race. But every time that I failed, I felt like, well, I could probably do that better. It wasn't a frustrating experience where I was like, there's no way I'm ever going to get better at this. Every time I did it, I got better. And then when I beat the race, what's ironic is that the, the races that follow the snow level are actually easier. I thought they were easier. And I beat the... It uh, even I says two, they are. Sometimes it's like, oh, this is an easy one. It's like, it is? Yeah, I beat <laughs> two additional stages on my first try yeah. uh, after I beat the snow stage. So, um, so one thing that uh, I think the car looks fantastic. I mean, it's probably the best rendered car in any Amiga racing it's game I've ever sized. played. It's a good size. Yeah. It's a good size. In fact, it's detailed. Yeah. It's a good size. All the animation looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, now, uh, Neil in the chat was saying that this is one of these games where the car, if you do, if you do look at it, it does look like it's floating over top the scenery because it doesn't have a shadow or anything like that. It does leave skid marks, which yeah. add to the realism a little bit, but that didn't really bother me. I thought that the car just looked really, yeah, really good. I didn't good. even think about that. I thought it looked like it was just driving to me. Yeah. And also, yeah, when so, you hit like guardrails and stuff, you actually can break them, right? You know? So right. like stuff you've got, happens. You've got destructible scenery. Yeah. The scenery itself looks beautiful. Well, I like mean, the, it's absolutely gorgeous. That depends. I don't necessarily agree with that on because some of the stages, it's just the dirt worst. Mm. Like, and I, I'm going to use the swamp as an example. Okay. The swamp that is sound great. is absolute crap. It looks hideous. It's just hideous. And also, Africa. That's another I one. I'm think not going to look too bad. I'm not going to. The animals, they look like. <laughs> those animals sucked, Boat. They were horrible. <laughs> I'm not. No. I think really the snow level is probably the best level that I, that I saw. The African level. I'll just say the graphics are a mixed bag. You can, but they're 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 tolerable. That's for darn sure. No I doubt. think they're more than tolerable. I think that they're they're on the they're on the good side. Even the bad stages are still on the good side in terms of they actually tried to populate the the tracks with things that were interesting to look at. Well, which, I, which I, the swamp stage is, is hideous. That was okay. I mean that was okay. really I'll, I'll give you yeah. the swamp stage. So anyway, um, basically what happens what happened to me and this is where the game falls apart is that. <sighs> I don't know how you get good enough to actually upgrade your car because by the time that I finished a race, I was always coming in relatively close to the time that, you know, the, the max yeah, time, the, the record time. Right. Yeah. Um, I only had enough money to repair my car and refuel. And then I was broke again. So I don't know how you, you must have to just be super, super good or maybe pick up more money, you know, as you as you roll around the track in order to get. I just don't know how you'd actually be able to save up enough money because these other cars are mega expensive. What did you think so, about the game decision to put like basically pick up bonus goodies on the track? That's that's dumb. If, in a game didn't like that strike this, strike you was odd in yeah, this game. Yeah. It'd be like if you had guns. Right. I mean, it's like yeah. I mean, it's like supercars too. It's like what were they thinking? Yeah, that didn't, um, that didn't make a lick of sense to me. Right. Right, <laughs> because you, I um, thought you had a serious rally game going here. You know? Yeah, yeah. In a game like this, you know, they should have number one given you the opportunity to just do a just do a time trial and not penalize you for for losing, and two, do away with all of the arcadey type stuff like the pickups on the road and stuff like that. Because you've got a really good game. I, I'm sorry, I, I really like this game. I think it's a quality game, and um, and it, th that stuff takes away from it. I'm going to agree with you on some of that. Uh, I also the, listen. I read some reviews on this, and it was just getting murdered. Okay, I don't. I don't get that at all. Well, I do, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> if you had look at the, those animals, by the way, they it, look great. If you had the disc version of this, you were in swapping hell. Okay, okay. I tried this. I I played this on the uh, on Amiga Forever with the disc, and it was a nightmare. And that was the four disc, and I've heard the seven disc is bad too. Also, the seven disc has a installation, hard drive installation, which is also screwed up. So you have to do a bunch of crazy stuff to get the hard drive installation to work. Okay, so those are a little. This game looks like something that they rushed out the door to me. I I encountered tons of glitches. All right, which is something else. And I thought, man, is it just me? Is it the enemy? No, 
It was on everything I tried it on. I got some glitches. All right. And there what was, do you mean? Just like uh, the car having some weird, uh, like glitchiness around it, like in front of it, uh, it uh, or making a weird noise. Now they get you some weird glitches. And I, I did some research, and sure enough, that was one of the one of the things I read about was that people, including the reviews, because I actually went and translated some reviews out of uh, uh, out of Amiga Joker, and they mm-hmm. mentioned that too that they that it had some weird glitches. It's just not. They did a lot to to make this game look nice, but it's not what I would call polished. They, I think they're still they still needed a little more polish on it uh, to make that stuff happen. Again, I don't think the pickups were a good idea. I think that's goofy. I agree with you on the money because I felt like I'd have real good runs, real good, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I get back to the thing now. Part of this boat might be cultural. Maybe when they do a rally, because I like to try to repair my car most of the way up, you know, mm-hmm. for safety's right. sake. Right. But, I mean, maybe you're supposed to not repair it at all or not give it hardly any gas, and then that's how you mm-hmm. get your money. But, I mean... You could be right about that. But, I mean, it seems like I didn't want to run out of gas. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's and it can happen because some of these races are longer than others. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, um, again, just like with the chick coach ever having a male voice, that's just an oversight. They could, I mean, that's mm-hmm. stupid. Uh, the, the fact that you've got to hire these drivers over and over, they're too expensive and they're too vital. You've got to have a co-driver if you want to get anywhere in this game. Sure, I won a few races without one, and you don't want the dud. Because if you get the the dud ones, then your car's going to take a ton of damage, and by the time it's uh, the race is over, you should you would have saved the money on the damage by just hiring a decent uh, co-pilot. Yeah, I don't which like, I mean is part. Of, I mean that's part of the strategy well, of the game, though. To me, I would not the, have made that. I I don't like. I will say that I didn't like that too because much. Because think about it. If you're as good as you are, you know, you just got done saying that you could win races without the co-driver, then you make the strategic choice to not go all out on the co-driver, well, and then you use your money on other things. The problem is, when I, the, I sure I won races without the co-driver, when I say won, I finished it in well, good time, but my car was trashed, okay? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's it doesn't behoove you to not have one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that you can't have the co-driver's voice when the music's on, the fact that you can't have music and sound at the same time, you know, in nine. That's just an Amiga, that's an Amiga thing. No, though. we've played tons of games that you could do that. That's ridiculous. No, I'd like to see other any. cars on the track. I'm not going to kill it for that, but I would like to just see some just to make it a little more fun. You know, I, that's I find that odd. So there are plenty of reasons for this to get killed. And when we go over the reviews, you you will see that it did get killed. Sure. Uh, with all that said. Uh, I find myself playing this a lot because it was fun. It really, yeah. and you know, I don't like these games, but the close-up camera crap. Mm-hmm. But when you've got a good, co- when you've got a good co-driver, and you get in the flow, you know, and you can have a good time with this. And I got fairly far uh, on it as well. Uh, what what would screw me is if I didn't have enough money for a good co-driver, or if I tried on occasion because I'm like you. It's like, how do I get some money? Maybe if I pick up these little doodads. Well, then you're wrecking a lot more. And so, and, mm-hmm. and like, it, this can't be worth it. You know, these little doodads cause you to wreck because they don't put those in the best spot. Sometimes they put no. them way off the track, you know. Uh, sometimes you can get turned around on the track, uh, which is a pain. And sometimes you'll you'll go over these, like, jumps. And it, this thing's real sensitive about how you go over them. If you go, if you go over them even remotely wrong, your car will tumble sideways. Right. It, it, it's funny, though, because you're, when your car is tumbling – Except for the damage that you take, you actually get a little speed boost out of it. Cause, yeah, but cause the damage, you at a the damage is not worth it. I mean, it all, yeah, it right. all comes out in the wash. You got to pay for that stuff. I liked what I saw. I didn't see every track. Obviously, I don't know how many tracks it's got, and I couldn't find any uh, any definitive answer to how many tracks it's got. I'm guessing this didn't sell that well. <laughs> for mm-hmm. yeah. Because I looked around, I was like, man, there's nothing on this game, Harley, in English. Uh, but uh, I liked what I saw. For the most part, like I said, the swamp was horrible, but the snow was good, and the woods and see that they were okay. You know, I, th- I enjoyed them. Some of the roads are just destroyed, and it really makes the traveling slow. I thought that was kind of weird, mm-hmm. but I guess that's what happens at a real rally. You know, where right? The, right, where the car is real jacked up, especially if especially if you're like fifteenth. You know, you're the fifteenth car to go down there. Those the cars that came before you will tear up the road and all yeah. that stuff. So it's pretty accurate representation, I think, of of the kind of conditions that that you might have. And it is, you know, you can say what you want about the graphics, but at least they presented a variety of visual styles. Remember we played that game for the CD32 that was that overhead uh, racer for the CD32? Yeah. All those tracks were exactly yeah. the same. You I know, mean, and, and this is a real a real breath of fresh air. I knew you were going to like this, despite the reviews, despite all the problems, and I knew why. Remember we played that game on the Atari, 
where you yeah. where your guy John Al- Anderson's fire. Rally Speedway. I was watching uh, 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 who was it? Frodo Flack. or Forty Eight K or Flack. Yeah, Flack is who it was played that. But I mean, we both are suckers for games where there's a bunch of crazy scenery and mm-hmm. you get to kind of explore it. And that's what this game is. It's got awesome scenery for the most part. You're going uh, under stuff and through stuff and tunnels and across br- uh, bridges. It's cool looking. You know, they did a good job on that stuff. And I will say uh, that in 2021, I would give this a much higher score than I would have given it when it was released. And that's solely on the basis of the technology that's involved in not having to swap all the discs out, yeah. having yeah. hard drive accessibility, and even having a trainer if you've got one. I think you're going to do a lot better on it. Um, I will say, I did, believe it or not, I found scores since I had to dig, Boat. I had to really mm. dig uh, for these. So, uh, Lemon gives the AGA version of this a 5.73, a very low score. But the ECS version, it gives a four. They dropped the hammer that's, on the ECS. That's version. insane. Well, the ECS is, version looks like butt. It's real bad. Does it? And also, okay. it's kind of it's even quirkier than the AGA version, from what I read. Mm-hmm. Um, Amiga Info gave this six out of ten. Uh, Amiga Joker gave scored both types. They gave the uh, AGA version a fifty nine out of one hundred, and they gave the ECS version a forty four out of one hundred. Uh, Amiga Games gives us a 57%. P and I, just for fun, I looked at the PC version because they're virtually the same. The PC Joker, that's a thing. They gave it a 42, and the PC Player gave it a 31. So the DOS version, don't head over there to try to find relief, as I'll demonstrate. Speaking of, speaking of the DOS version, you 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 got that uh you you, you got a a little port comparison oh, here yeah. for us, don't you? I sure do. And it is uh well, and once you see the DOS version crank up here, it'll allow me to uh. Faci- if you're watching at home, it doesn't exactly uh, it doesn't exactly cruise along at a at a brilliant no, clip. It doesn't thrill you with breakneck speed. Yeah. I can tell you now, that. Now we don't know. I don't know who the fellow was. I didn't do this. This is just one something I found. There was a very few offerings on uh, on uh, YouTube to. Uh, you might have to crank this up on the ExoDOS tonight. Yeah, I may I, I may have to do that. But I mean, it virtually it looks about the same. But it's it's running like a butt. Uh, yeah. But I mean, you're basically even if it's let's say it runs perfect. Uh, it's it's pretty much about the same. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Uh, in case you were wondering how the DOS version worked, Boat. Uh, did we get any Discord, sweet, sweet Discord action on this thing, Boat? Oh, yeah. In fact, we just got another late-breaking Discord review in. Uh, we'll start at the top with Duncan Styles, the dunk. He says, I didn't like this game when I first played. Now I do. It's not perfect. The screen could do with being zoomed out a little to give you a better view of the corners ahead. The in-game menu could have been either mouse-driven or better set up for quick selection using a joystick. There is a good game in there, and maybe a bit more polish or a sequel could have exposed it. Fun to be had, though. 7.5 out of 10. Super Famiking writes, i never played this before and was excited as I like top-down racers. First impressions were great. The graphics and presentation are fantastic and wouldn't look out of place on a console. This could be the Amiga's Thrash Rally or Neo Drift out, I thought. The game handles well, moves at a decent speed, and the tracks are varied and interesting. Unfortunately, there's one major flaw that kills it. You get limited warning or reaction time to the upcoming corners, so unless you memorize the tracks, you're boned. What could have been the best overhead racer on the Amiga becomes frustrating to play. More in the Chris Jenner school of motoring than Colin McRae. And I wonder if Super Famicom knew about the uh, the navigators in the office. This is something I was going to bring up, because I didn't know right away. And I Mm -hmm. can easily see how people would play this and not know about the navigator. Because he's right. Without that navigator, I would have murdered this game. I agree. Level Lord writes, I remember playing this a long time ago on the A1200. Graphics and sound effects are nice and did not miss music. It would be more of a distraction in a racing game for me. Controls are pretty sensitive, and I was driving all over the place, but that might be my driving skills. It lacks some kind of warning for corners because the area in which you drive in is is zoomed in so much, and with my reflexes, it was not a great experience. Smaller car sprite and larger driving area in this game would be awesome. Still not a bad game. 6.5 out of 10. Was that you said it was level lord? That was level lord. Lord, did you did you did you know about the co-driver, my friend? Oh, he says I completely forgot. There you go. There you go. Pixels of Dawn writes. This looks nice and had a lot of potential, but there's just too many stumbling blocks to a good game experience, at least on the OCS version. The biggest one is that the first rally you get put into on championship mode is the slippy, slidey snow rally, meaning you wreck your vehicle at the first hurdle and then are unable to repair it because you have no money. The second rally is much easier and should have eased you in more. 
Also, I get the impression you don't get a co-driver by default, which seems insane as they're pretty much essential to play. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the OCS version doesn't seem to support mouse in the menus. I did manage to find some fun once I got past race one, but I had to try too hard to get to to get there. Six out of ten. I think we're seeing a trend here, Boat. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Flack. Rob Flack O'Hara writes, looks great, sounds great, and fun to play when your navigator shows up. Unfortunately, mine seems to have spent the previous evening at the pub with Boat and keeps passing out when I need him the most. Yes. (laughs) 17-year-old me had quicker reflexes and might have done better. 47-year-old me tried a few times and then finally rage quit. I like rally racing games, but without those navigation arrows, it's Smash City for me. 5 out of 10. P.S. If you need headlights to race, perhaps you should pause the race and wait until morning. And finally... The living legend himself, Graham W. Vebke, writes, As soon as I saw the view angle of the game, I thought this is a Neo Driftout clone. Mm-hmm. The animation is smooth, but you resume too far in and are not given enough notice of track variations. The controls are okay, but they feel worse than they are, in my opinion, because of the lack of turning notice. It's a flaw that spoils what could have been a great game. The night stage is weird, but I think this tries to mimic Neo Driftout stage flow. I wish they made the earlier stages easier to to get you into it. Five out of ten. There it I'm going to have to play Neo Drift Out. I haven't played that right, yet. Right, but Graham also mentioned the lack of having corner arrows. The, I, bet, right. I bet the majority of the people didn't even know about that. Yeah, yeah. They, You know, it, it just goes into... When you make a game, you've got to make certain things apparent. And when you when you have something like an office, like you said, that office can mean anything. It doesn't, it and, doesn't necessarily scream, this is where you pick up your navigator and from. And, Bo, you know what they could have done? Okay, and I would have been okay with this. They give you the dirt worst navigator, okay? Mm-hmm. But then right. they put a message up, upgrade your navigator for this amount of money. Just yeah. something like that. Go to the office now. Hire a right. new guy. This guy I sucks. I think they were they were so excited about using that uh, that digitized photo of the gas station in the office. That what they should have done is just giving you a super off-road like upgrade screen where they well, put all the stuff on there and let you go. I, part of me likes the idea of hiring better assistance but i mean yeah even if, i think what they should have also done instead of having guys that just straight up missed turns have them give it to you at the 11th hour like now and where you've got a proper guy who gives you tons i want to see time. i want to see i want to see the weenie guy the 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 the, the two thousand pound guy or whatever you pay him give you wrong turns where he says go left and you should really go right no <laughs> like i said in a real race i would have jumped out of the car and just beat that guy in the in the, in the dust <laughs> for for what he did but overall you know i gotta say all that aside, and by the way, I know for certain that there's a trainer for this game. All right, so here's my suggestion, Boat. Go out, get you a trainer. Hopefully, I don't think it's not baked in the WHD load as far as I can tell, mm-hmm. but go out and find you a trainer or a cheat and, and, and get yourself some money, you know, or try it straight up. But for God's sakes, go and hire that navigator. I think you'll enjoy this game a lot more. It's not perfect, it's got a, a tons of flaws, as we mentioned. But uh, I had more fun than anyone should out of something that's getting 44s and 50s. You know, yeah. so this is actually, it's sad, but we, <laughs> but we both agree on it. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, it means that the magazines aren't always right. I was ready you to know, fight you. you. I was... Sometimes, yeah, <laughs> some, sometimes you just got to play the game for yourself and, and make your own yeah. call. Well, and like you said, you can't undersell the fact that a lot of these reviewers were just furious with the incessant disc swapping, and we didn't yeah. have to deal with yeah, that. Yeah, that so. that is a deal breaker. I mean, because I yeah. played body blows and stuff, and it is it's so wor- it's it's infuriating. So I'm not going to jump on them too bad. But yeah, I would give this one. It's just, this is one of those guilty pleasures, boat. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Did you find this one on eBay? Uh, I looked on eBay. I didn't find Jack Squat on eBay. So yeah, All right. something tells me they didn't sell too many of these bad boys. Uh, man. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, they uh, something tells me you didn't see too many of those things uh, getting getting uh, pulled up, especially in '94 when the uh, the ship was sinking. Yeah, yeah. All right, Aaron. Why don't we move on to uh, some Amigos community updates, huh? All right. What do you got? Well, let's uh, let's start out on the old YouTube channel. All righty. Fair enough, boat. Uh, we had a busy week this week, wouldn't you say, Boatster? Uh, yes. We had a lot of... Uh, in fact, you were responsible for a good chunk of those, <laughs> but we'll get to it. So, you know, it, it, it's funny. You know, I'll go months <laughs> without really doing too much on the old YouTube, Yeah. and then every once in a while, I just get inspired. Yeah, there you go. Well, you were inspired this week, but let's start, as we always do, with me and the Brent. Yeah. This week, uh, our own uh, good buddy, Jack Flack... Uh, submitted a piece that we rolled, which was Robot Madness, Boat. Robot mm-hmm. Madness. And we picked a couple games that had robots in them. I picked the classic uh, Atari uh, uh, robot 
sports game Cyberball uh, mm-hmm. is my choice. And the Brent Roy, really, I gotta give the Brent credit on this one, Boat. He picked a game I never heard of called Mr. Robot and his Robot Factory. I love Brent's reasoning. He picked this because it's Robot Week, and this had Robot in the title twice. That was his reasoning yeah. about it. But by <laughs> God, his reasoning paid off because this game is top shelf, Boat. I can't believe you'd never played this one. Before. I had never even heard of it, Boat. I yeah, love this. this is the yeah this is this is one of those uh, whenever you read about you know the all time classics on the Atari. Yeah. But now I don't know that this got an American release back in the day. This is definitely something I've only discovered recently. Uh, you know, w- since since I was a kid, basically. Uh, so yeah, I I don't blame you for not having known about it. Um, but uh, this is one. Whenever uh, I started getting into the um, you know the the getting and I got that flash cart. Yeah. For the uh, the uh, the Atari 1200XL, and I downloaded the Atari 8-bit best game pack. This was like everybody's like, you got to play Mr. Robot and his Robot Factory. I can't tell you how much time I spent. You know, of course, everyone on here knows I'm the biggest minor 2049er fan. And as I mentioned to Brent, some would call this a blatant ripoff of minor 2049er. I like to call it a loving tribute to minor 2049er. That's right. That's it, right. It took, like I said on the show, this is what I wanted in the sequel to minor 2049er. Mm-hmm. More crazy gizmos, more wackiness, plus the level editor, which I haven't toyed with yet, but just the thought of that fills with a certain delight and glee. So anyway, yeah. if you uh, feel so inclined, you can check me and the Brent out uh, on ARG Presents. We are, of course... Oh, oh yeah, go ahead. And, and I take it back. This did get a U.S. release because it was published by Datasaw. There you and, go. Or is that Data... Mo- oh, Data Most. I'm sorry. I was trying to read the little print on the screen, yeah. and I was wrong. So oh, there you go. uncertain if this got uncertain. a U.S. release. Uh, but uh, we'll be recording, as always, every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please join us if you feel so inclined. All right. Next on the docket. Bam. He's back. Here it is. Another Patreon's Top 10. I believe the brutal one took care of business here. This is Graham mm-hmm. W. Vebke boat. Uh, and yes. this is the beautiful style that we've come to enjoy on these Top 10s. And this thing, people wanted to know what was going on with Graham because this thing did pretty well. They mm-hmm. got a lot of hits. Uh, for Graham's yeah. top ten. Well, I mean, Graham, like I said, he's a living legend. People want to know what he's what he plays on the Amiga. To me, it makes sense why why this went over like gangbusters. And uh, Brutal Barracuda wants me to put the word out: if you are a Patreon supporter of Amigos, uh, get in touch with him. Drop him a DM on Discord. Send him your top ten most played Amiga games, and he'll make one of these videos just for you and has put it up on the channel. D- I don't think he's done me, has he? I, I don't go look. look. I would have yeah. remembered that. Brutal. I know he's done one Email for me, and it was great. Email coming, my friend. But yeah, Brutal's got to... Listen, the guy's got skills to pay the bills. Yeah. And Graham's got good taste, so good on mm-hmm. him. Very good. Check that out. Check out... Get into what Graham's into, man. Uh, so, next on the docket boat, uh, as we move through these... Let me get my place again. You know, I hate the way that they do this stuff. That makes it so confusing to try to follow along. So, boat, this is all you, my friend. This is the build a mister on a budget. You've been yeah. Mr. Mister this week. I have been Mr. Mister. So uh, basically, you know, I no one, as far as I know, no one has, has, has done a video like this before. And so I figured, well, why not? Why not me? And so I, I basically just went through and I talked about all the components that I use with my Mister and how you can basically build a Mister on the lowest possible budget and still have a good experience. Now, there are some caveats. You know, like, for example, if you're going to be throwing your mister in a backpack and taking it to your buddy's house, you're probably going to want a real case, not just the enclosure that it comes with. But (laughs) you you, you don't necessarily need the USB hub. Uh, You don't necessarily need or the the official mister hub. Uh, You don't necessarily need the I.O. board. You don't necessarily need the 128 meg RAM if you're just going to be using it for, you know, 8 bit computers. Uh, So, um you know, and I talk about, you know, I, I basically just go through and I, I illuminate all the different parts uh, and uh, and go through each of them. I still haven't put the heat sink on mine yet, but it's it's ready and waiting. It's, um, it's, it's a it's a moral issue with you, Boat. It is. It is. <laughs> uh, and burn so that thing up. <laughs> that is the uh, that that that's basically it. Yeah. This video was very popular on our on our channel. I was I think you did a great job. Split it up into chapters, the whole nine yards. A proper job, Boat. Thank you. Very impressive, my friend. So, uh, let's move on. Oh, here we go. Here's another show that blew up. I was surprised, which was good old Coco. The Coco Show, Boat. Yeah. We took a look. We recorded this one a while back. This was us taking a look at Demon Attack, Boat. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, yeah, Demon Attack, I believe that we recorded this on the same day that we did Pole Position. Yeah, that which was a was rough right one. After, right after the Coco show. There was heavy, there was heavy <laughs> editing talk. involved in both these, both yeah. these shows. You know, Demon Attack is a, is, a, is a rare Coco port where it features just something so graphically impressive that it can't be touched on any of the other ports. You don't say that a lot about, especially Coco 1 and 2 games. Yeah. Uh, the boss battle in this game is just off the chart awesome. So, yeah. uh we talk about that we talk about the history of demon attack and in all the different platforms that it appeared on yeah i uh, i like demon attack on the coco it's fun uh and, and also we compared it with the television which i also enjoy i thought they both had the two best versions demon mm -hmm. attacks one of those games that maybe you don't get now but when it came out it was a big big deal a lot of fun too uh back in the day so yeah check it out if you're uh, in the demon attack or if you're into the coco i had a good time on that particular episode boat um, let's move down the line. Now, this is a little something I did last week. Uh, you know, every once in a while, but I'll take a notion to do a little thing called the Friday Night uh, Amigo Aaron Stream. And last night, it was or last week, it was a moral imperative for me to play C64 games on the Amiga just to prove that it could be done <laughs> and prove that the I had the was patience to it. do it. And more important, by God, I wanted to prove to the world that I could load a tape on this sucker. And, and we did. Uh, we at the very the, we tried several and we sat through many and then we sat through the loading of this but finally commando load up I was so happy boat I had I had a fist pump moment I had a very patient you know, chat uh, room you, you know at uh, Rob's funeral he wants the uh, ending uh, high score music from commando for the C64 played well the, the problem with that is Rob is that YouTube will not allow that music to be featured in any sort of video so make sure your <laughs> funeral is not taped. Because the, it, during the climactic end sequence of this video, YouTube decided that we were illegally playing a cover of the arcade music to Commando. So I had to, <laughs> have to get in. The, they're idiots. I don't know what the heck they're thinking. But anyway, yeah. if you want to see me load, this actually was sort of important to me because this is the last leg of my Unamiga core tryouts. You know, I went through the ZX, uh, Next, and the MSX, and of course the Amiga. And I wanted to get the C64 one in because it is the least, It's it, with the exception of the NES one, it's the one that has the least frills. It's all in Spanish. It doesn't help you load anything. So you have to load stuff old school. Uh, mm -hmm. But it was fun. And it, I will say this, it worked. It worked great. So, you know, uh, if I need a VGA-capable uh, C64 without a fast load cartridge, I'm in business. So there you go. Uh, so, oh, I should mention, tonight I'll be back in action on the Friday night uh, amigo Aaron stream tonight we're playing windows three games windows three yes. games but yes. that should be quite a can't wait night. speaking of a guy who was around for windows three and windows two it's buddy jack flack uh, and he's playing uh, amazingly how timely but racing games in fact this should look familiar to you there yeah. it is the one we were talking I love that about game. uh i was on this stream i was watching his act and it was good good stuff I believe he also t spent the early part of this stream, if I'm not mistaken, talking about uh, a little thing called boxing, Boat. And I don't mean boxing with your fists. I mean boxing on the payphones of the 80s. Mm. And it was great. Uh, I love that stuff. I was never real good at it, uh, but uh, and I'm not, I'm not gonna. Uh, exo did I'm you not ever? Did you ever? Did it? <laughs> but, did you ever have one of those uh, blue box devices, Aaron? Well, no. I never yeah, had I mean, your, ex, your, your exploits of dumpster diving at the AT&T store are well, well documented. I had phone point, exploits, but... too, but they weren't of the boxing variety. I was I was going for the coins. I was, uh, so that's... The, the, the old piece of gum on the string routine? I was, well, well, no, it was a little less... It was even stupider than that, frankly. <laughs> By the way, we look, we saw many uh, C64 racing titles that were all... Much like a Frodo stream we'll talk about. They were all better than uh, Outrun on the Amiga. Here's another one. You know, it's... <laughs> And that's demoralizing, frankly. But yeah, Flack ran through a bunch of different racing games. By the way, look at that boat. There's your pole that was position fantastic. too. Pole Doesn't position that look good? Too, yeah. Check out the, the Monument Valley or whatever back there. It looks awesome. Mm -hmm. So if you want some wacky fun, then that's the only way you could describe Jack Flack. You should be Jack Whack because it's always a good time. He's always got uh he's always got some little breaks in his videos to talk about the craziest stuff. I always enjoy it. Check him out. That is Sprite Castle plays racing games. A good, a good time uh, on that one. Now we're back to you, Boat. Why don't you go over this bad boy? All right. So this was this is probably going to be my last Mister specific video. Mm -mm. Uh, and uh, basically, what I did was, well, I mean, the, you know, I, I can't think of anything else to talk about. To tell you the truth, uh, <laughs> this is just like how how to set up your Mister. 
And so I go through and and basically the the beginning part of this video is the is the better part of the video. Uh, the, and this all comes from Flack. Flack sent me an email with both of these links in it. The first link downloads all of the uh, all of the setup stuff. So all you have is just uh, mount that or, or you know write that image to your SD card, then stick it in the mister. The mister does everything. And then there's a script that you run once you get that up and running within the mister. You run that script, and then you have all your folder structure and everything's already set up, the update all script. And so those are things that, that a lot of people don't know about. They try and they build their 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 folder structure themselves, and it's, it's a lot of work that you don't need to do. Very good. And so I basically just talk people through that, and then my capture card goes insane when they when it shows that that uh, the the static screen uh -huh. behind the the I'm menu on the Mister. And so I'm assuming you saw some of the comments that that said that you could actually change that static background to something else. So yeah, yeah, I've actually already done that on my main Mister build. I yeah. don't know why I didn't think to do it when I was making the video, yeah. but yeah. yeah, you can change that. Um, but anyway, and then I just talk about how to define your buttons, which yeah, is very which good. is pretty easy to do. On the That's Mister, good so. stuff, boat. That's good stuff. I'm, and I'm gonna use that if I ever go down the road I'll be I'll be ready to go man um, so uh, let's talk about here we go horizons introduction tape to the ZX full playthrough with Hermski boat look at that so <laughs> that's I actually kind of play have <laughs> I actually have this this tape on the for the spectrum I've got the actual tape this is like a demonstration tape that shows you all the the wonderful things that your spectrum can do um, did you ever get like with a new car or did you ever find in like a thrift store like the audio demonstration tape for like a car stereo? Yeah, I've I seen remember, those. I remember like Ford had one and I wore that thing out. It had like Louis Armstrong singing What a Wonderful World and all this what? other stuff on you it. You wore it out? Why? I wore it out, man. The... It was just, I, I didn't have anything else to listen to, what I guess. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> this explains a lot to me. You just sat and listened to a, a car demonstration tape. Did you have the car? Heck no. You're... It was for like a 1987 Ford uh, Tempo. How long ago was this? <laughs> this was in high school. Oh. What else was I going to do? <laughs> so anyway, you can, uh, you can walk, you know, Hermsky basically just lets this thing run. And it, it does. It teaches you every little thing about, you know, your spectrum. You can see how the computer works. This is back when people actually cared about how things work. Yeah, no, it's just, just a uh, magic <laughs> box yeah, that makes, yeah. the, makes the internet show up. That's all it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> So another great video from Hermski. Yeah, this looks good. I, I mean, <laughs> what this? And he gets a, a, they got some card games in there. They've got mm -hmm. some. Hermski always has the unique stuff. Well done, Hermski, once again. Okay, now look at this boat. This is right up your alley, dude. Yeah, it is, man. I mean, when you this is the this is our good buddy Frodo and L. This is his stream from the first year of the NES, part one of two. Uh, and he this plays is a horrible game, by the way. The baseball NES game? baseball, is this the one black, of the worst black baseball box games game? ever. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it's we, all, I mean, look at the speed. Look at the play, speed of those. I've played a players. lot worse. I can tell you that on ARG, I've played some baseball games that were <laughs> <laughs> games in name only. They released some good stuff the first year. Excite Bike. Everybody loves that. Oh yeah, yeah. Baseball was a dud, but there were some real winners. Cuckoo Land's great golf. Golf. Golf for the NES is one of my favorite golf games of all time. Here you go, right here. Kung Fu. Dun, 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 dun. You get some Kung right. Fu. I love that one. Uh, good stuff on here. Of course, you've got the. Uh, uh, the always personable, always charming, Frodo, and his and his uh, band of buddies here that show up for all the streams. A good time uh, on this mm -hmm. one. I just caught Frodo's stream uh, just the other night, and also caught a little bit of Saturdays. For I love, I like his stuff. He does a lot of this first year stuff, and it's actually quite fascinating, boat. Uh, yeah, you different... really get to see the roots of the system before they figure it out all the tricks. And something and to look everything. forward to is he's told me that at some point in, in the near future, he'll be doing the Amiga year one. And you'll recall, mm. I did that little segment on that a while back. So I'm looking forward to seeing him try out some of that gunk that was on there. Yeah. And then lastly, uh, but not least, <clears throat> I guess Boat, I'm assuming this was you. Uh, yes. This is Dragon's Den for the Commodore 64. This is, a, this is one of the games we're going to put ARG this week. What did you think yeah. of this? I love this game. I thought it was great. It's a total hidden gem. This reminded me, of, like, you know, we always talk about Forbidden Forest and how great that game was. Yeah. This is another one of those where it's like, I think it only came out, I think it came out on the C64, maybe like the Amstrad or something like that. But this this is just 
it's an amazing game in the tradition of Jungle Hunt or Jungle King, where you've yeah. got multi stages, you're doing different stuff, and then the final battle with the dragon is super cool. Any game where you mount a Pegasus, I'm on board with. We're suckers for these type of games, Boat. It's yeah. it's funny how we we do have those similarities. We like multi stage games, and we like uh, we like uh, your uh, California game style games, mm-hmm. and and this yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna give away my uh, secret ending, but yeah, this this was a uh, this is an interesting uh, game to say the least. And I did I captured this on the Mister, so I Great. guess I, I did knew have it. one of more Mister video than me. Good <laughs> saying. That's all we got, Boaster, on the uh, on that front. All right. Well, let's roll on to some of the uh, Amigos community Hold challenges on. that we have. Oh, two things. Why don't you talk okay. about what you and Neil are up to? We almost forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we just, as, as Amigos went to press, we just released a new episode of This Week in Retro. Last week we were off. This week we are back on. And, Aaron, we have tons of stories. That's not true. We have four stories that we uh, that we uh, we cover the, fir- the one that I wanted to talk to you about, Aaron, was this new Atari 2600 game, okay? Okay. So this thing is it's, – it's, uh, it's called Circus Convoy, and it's made by – you know David Crane? You heard I've that heard name him, before? Yeah. Okay. David Crane, Gary Kitchen. Yeah. These are the, the, the heavy hitters from Activision from back in the day. They've launched a new game studio called – audacity games and they are making something about this actually yeah they're they're making new games for the atari 2600 this first one circus convoy now aaron what i wanted to talk to you about is the way that they're marketing this okay so what they're doing here is you've got your your normal edition sixty dollars for the box game okay now ninety dollars atari game this is for an atari 2600 game $90 $90 for the collector's edition, which includes a poster and guarantees you a low serial number. Okay. So what do you think about this whole serial number, certificate of authenticity, collectability angle to new games for retro systems? I hate it. <laughs> Those prices are idiotic <laughs> and, and, uh, and and greedy. You're not going to pay $90 for this, Aaron? No. Now, are they going to release this on a El Cheapo digital version of this? I don't think so. I think that this game is only going to be available through physical uh, physical means to cut down on the old piracy. When I turn this on, is it going to go, we got a circus convoy rocking oh, through the night? I take it back. Buck Owen says that $90 gets you the ROM, too. So yeah. you, you do get the... I guess they figure if you're paying 90 bucks for this thing, you're not going to want to share the ROM that you get with it. Well... I think I mean this looks pretty good. You've got and we know the guys that are making it are studs. I mean mm-hmm. there's no doubt. You know, Circus Convoy, like the idea, the name, the yeah. graphics of this we're looking at it now if you're watching the stream. Uh, but I mean that's that's outrageous. Uh, I mean that's just that's outrageous amounts of greedy amounts of money. Uh if you want the truth. Uh not even a t- AAA modern title costs $90. You know, so yeah. I, I don't and, like and it. Now, one thing I didn't mention, there's also a Mega Collector's Edition that's $140. What do you get with and, that? Uh, it, it just says, mini physical collectibles. That's all the info you get. They leave well, it up to your imagination. I I love the old Activision crew. Kitchen, mm-hmm. Crane, all those guys, are, they're gold. I mean, they, yeah. they don't have to prove themselves to me. I, I have no doubt this will be a fun game. It looks fun. All right, but... Uh, and, le- and if they have, like, here's the thing, if they have a digital release of this that is somewhere in the ballpark of sanity, I'm going to say something like 20 bucks, okay? That's, I still like that's quite a bit of money for an Atari game. Let's say 20 bucks, okay? For a digi- that's 20 bucks for the box? No, no, just, and- just, no, okay. just the digital download. Just the ROM, okay, got it. I still think that's too much. Let's say, but that's somewhere in the realm of sanity, because these are the luminaries of the Atari, okay? Right. They're trading on their name at some, you know, to some extent. And the game is good, of course. But if they don't have a, some sort of digital download of this, and, and so the only way you could get it is to pay these guys 90 or 100 bucks, nah. That's, 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 I hate it. I hate it. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I know these guys got to eat, but I mean, that's too much. That's just too and, much and, money. And, and you don't think that the, the fact that uh, you know, you're know you guaranteed a low serial number or something like that, that doesn't mean anything. Listen, you're you're going into the realm of the Pixel Gaiden boys on this, which these guys are all into collecting boxed copies with all this stuff. I've never cared that much about that. Now, you're talking to somebody who collects comics, 
so I can understand the correlation of, of, of a physical copy of something with a low serial number, that shtick, you know. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of people preying on people like that now. And I don't like it. I don't like the trend. But these people, listen, I guess you, you, uh, 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 if they're willing to pay the money, and these aren't idiots, uh, then they are entitled to pay it. I mean, the one thing I've always said is the people get mad about this stuff, but I mean, the, the market plays out what the price you could offer is. So if someone's giving you $100 to buy something, it's worth $100, no matter yeah. whether you think it's a ripoff or not. So if these guys can get that much money for this game, God bless them, go for it. Yeah. You know? uh, but I would and I would love to have a box ca- Atari cartridge. That'd be awesome, like with a new game that looks this good. That, that sounds great, but I'm not going to pay that for it. So, yeah. But, yeah, yeah it's an yeah. interesting. It looks great. I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays. So anyway, if you're interested in hearing me and Neil talk about that, plus a couple other of the late-breaking retro news stories of the week, check out the This Week in Retro YouTube channel, or you can subscribe to the podcast version through your favorite podcaster. Now, Aaron, before we go any further, it's time for you to talk about what's going on tomorrow night. I should. But there's also one other thing I also want to, and I almost forgot this, but I want to thank our good buddy, Anthony, over at the Amiga Show, who sent me this lovely shirt, Boat, is all. Oh, yeah. That. Isn't that nice? You, you have the world's loudest mic skip. I know. I, know. Well, that's I, don't, part, I don't know how that happens. Not, that's actually my back. That's the sad thing. <laughs> so here it is in all of its glory. We can look at, let me show off the guns here. And then we've also, he also sent me Boat, which was awful nice of him. Uh, he also ended up sending me a uh, uh, this uh, game here, Dodgy Rocks. Dodgy Rocks, Boat. Yeah, that was a huge hit at Amiga Ireland. I, yeah. I believe that Boss Man won the championship at that. Yeah, and I got a little some stickers and some other stuff in here. So thank you very much. Uh, I urge everyone to go uh, check out his awesome show, and I appreciated him letting me be a small part of it. Now, on to the business at hand, as you mentioned, the International Computer Club. Oh, yeah. Meeting 3 will be taking place... Uh, just uh, just under 23 hours from now, it'll be 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday. That's tomorrow if you're watching this live. Uh, we will have uh, seven uh, demonstrations, seven uh, presentations from various folks. Uh, if you've ever been to one of these before, you know the routine. If you haven't, uh, we get together on Zoom, a bunch of us, and then whoever doesn't want to get on Zoom can just watch via Twitch. And we just have a little computer roundtable, a little go-around. We have uh, people talk about all sorts of different computers and consoles, book reviews, uh, new hardware. We've seen uh, new stuff for the uh, Coco last time we were out, uh, 3D printing stuff. We see all kinds of different stuff from all across the spectrum of computers. And uh, then we chat a little bit. We call it a night. We try to get these suckers in in three hours. Should be a good time, Boat. That, again, will be... Uh, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, for the folks that are interested in participating or just being on the uh, Zoom panel, uh, I will post a link to the Zoom meeting uh, in the ICC tomorrow around uh, 1 o'clock or so. And that is in, in the International Computer uh, Channel on Discord. That's correct. That's correct. And everyone else is welcome to join us on the uh, Amigos Retro Gaming channel on Twitch. Uh, feel free to jump in, participate and uh, uh, let your voice be heard. There you go. Yes, yes. And I did I did make a mistake. Boss Man did not win the Dodgy Rocks competition in Amiga Ireland. That was Pixels at Dawn. Oh, let the record man. Let the record show that Pixels at Dawn yeah. reigns supreme at Dodgy there you Rocks. Go. There you go. All right. Now we move on to the high score championships that are going on on Discord as we speak. You know, International Karate Plus is still going on. I'm going to do a quick check-in to see what the high scores are at the moment. It looks like Z9K9 is uh, number one there. No and on the Specky High Score Challenge, it's our type this month. Uh, still a couple, actually got about a week left to get uh, to get your R type score in. Uh, right now, it looks like Z9K9 is uh, leading the pack there, too. So uh, somebody somebody needs to knock this guy off his pedestal. He's Z9K9, get him out of there. He's too good. Yeah. It's not going to be me, I can tell you that. No, <laughs> we're not very good at that game, that international karate especially. I've never been any good at that. No, no. I'm just not very good at video games. So I've heard that. All right, Aaron. 
we come to the point of the show where we start to thank the fine, fine members of the community that make this show happen. We start by thanking the people that support the show by subscribing on Twitch. Uh, you can subscribe to us on Twitch. You can do it for free if you're an Amazon Prime customer. Uh, you get one free Twitch sub a month. Uh, you can subscribe, help us out, and get access to our Discord channel. Everybody that subscribes to the uh, Twitch uh, channel gets access to our Discord, and that, of course, gives you access to the International Computer uh, Convention. Club. International Club. Yeah, sorry. Forgot what the C stood for. We want to thank the following people. Macintosh Librarian, Mitsuyama, Pints and Amiga, Bigfoot's Armpits, Eeyore 4077, Frodo NL, Orom, Peeplo, Great Algae, Captain Chaos DK, Jost80, Memories of a Spectrum Gamer, John Marshall 3, Jigglebox, Chronosnet, Still Adolescing, Buck Owens, Retro Rewind.ca, The Slow Norris, Christian Russell, MC Chessers, Mr. Sebastian, L. Curtis Boyle, All Hail, Blue Train, Yola Wookie, J. Dark Anubis, Gary Heather, Drummer, Level Lord, Da Crabs MTG, 48K Ram, Texas Footballer, Pixels at Dawn Gaming, Jason Warns, and Uber Scuber Diver. Thank you guys so much for supporting us on Twitch. Thank you. Now, Aaron, last week we had the Patreon Song Challenge. Oh, and I do want to I want to say a special thank you to Paul, a.k.a. Hermsky, for uh, suggesting rally championships to the AGSC and to the AGSC for voting on it for us to cover it on this episode. I dug it. Now. Um, we have some new supporters, Aaron. Uh, we want to welcome Seth Yates, Alistair Fiend, and Christian Russell. Patreon supporters all. Thank you guys Thanks, so much. Boys. You can support Amigos on Patreon, patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Four bucks a month. That's all it takes. That's a dollar an episode. Plus, you get all this extra stuff that we do. So uh, if you enjoy the show, please consider uh, supporting us on Patreon. We really appreciate it. Um, and, of course, we want to thank our sponsor, RetroRewind.ca. Now, last week, Aaron, the Patreon song challenge was uh, Never My Love by The Association. Uh, we have uh, the, 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 the first place winner that guessed it was the old YouTube content filter who immediately demonetized our video. That for, thing's uh, off for, the uh, charts. <laughs> it's ability yeah. to, uh, to diagnose... And, and figure out what you're seeing because no one else could possibly have figured that out. Well, you'd be wrong because Pac Billy also got it. He says, man, I've missed the last few weeks entirely. What a great one to return for, though. You did a beautiful job here. The Association's Inside Out and Orpheus's self-titled debut are two of the sunshine pop records I find myself spinning over and over. From the first few notes of your performance, I was in a mad dash to find my phone and peck out the answer here. Again, great work. This one would definitely lead off your lullaby album. I've listened several times already. Really soothes the pain of existence. Who was this? That's Pac Billy. Pac, my friend, my good friend. It's time to check into the padded cell, my friend. <laughs> the only thing that had me running to was the trash can for the vomiting. And you think and that was bad. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Slow Norris also got the correct oh. answer. So congratulations, Pac Billy and the Slow Norris. You are the winners of the Patreon Song Challenge this week. <laughs> There's not going to be a winner this week, I can tell you that. All right. Oh, well, man. let's find out. If you know the name of this song, please don't post it in the chat. Please send me an email at john at amigospodcast.com, and I will announce you as a winner on next week's show. So, good luck. Here we go. David C. George Rosensky, The Amiga Show, Daniel Crabtree, Super Family King, Grazy Loomis, William Venter Scar, Heavy Systems, Bundy Frag Lord, Mark Byland, Olaf Hope Hermsky, Jonah, aka Simulant Alien Breeder, Dave Velociraptor, Calvert Boy, Lane Denson, Luke Hudson, John Cook, Bomb the Bass, Frodo in L, Soul Incisor, Tech Mage Jurgen, Mr. Cola, Daniel Williams, Bernard Lucas, Jerry Dennington, Zorg Love. Reflection, Simon, Lech, Cap'n, Crispy, Kilobytes, and Caffeine, Gary, Heather, 
free lunch, Kate Fox, David Pickford, Cameron Armstrong, Andy Jones, Lobsterman made a 10 minute Amiga retrocast, Bernard Quinn, RMC, Tim Drew, Simon Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Hedder, Rob O'Hara, Matthew Laramore, and Craig Shonzo, Bart Bid, Roland Burke, Andrew Monks, so the zombie leaf Kellon. Alan Kebab, Bob Chekote, Level or John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRocher, Creepy Dead Boy, Figgy C to Z, The Slow Norris, Stefan Sorgard Monson, Edvin Helland, Blend of 75, Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abbott, Chris Foles, Lauren Giroux, Graham Feb, Key Adams, Batterby O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Gary Hucker, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles, Tapes from the Crypt, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THT, Eric Nelson, Kim Tommy, Humbridge Dye, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warren's Pixels of Dawn, and Kiel Bjorn Barman. Alright, Aaron. Next week on Amigos, we are going to be playing Nebulous, as picked by Paul, Bossman, Harrington. You know anything about Nebulous, Aaron? Oh, yes. I know that one. Mm. It's got many names. <laughs> I got a name for it, too. <laughs> well, we'll have to figure out what name that is next week. Guys, uh, we want to, before we head out, before we head out, um, I want to thank everybody that's watching us live in Twitch. Uh, thank you guys so much. We're, uh, we're going we're gonna to end the show because my internet is rapidly going down the tubes. So we will see you next week on Amigos. Until then, adios. adios.